Welcome back to Real Estate Appraisal Principles and Procedures. This is your instructor, Matt Boxberger, and this is our lecture for week three. This week we'll cover the second part of the math chapter, chapter two, and that's on statistics. So I'll break the lecture into two parts. The first part, the, the bulk of the lecture, will be on the, the fundamentals of statistics. This is covered in the, the book starting on page 52, and this covers statistics as it would be used measuring anything, uh, not just real estate. And so like last week, I'll also uh, refer you to some other good online resources if this is new to you and you need some more review of the fundamentals. And again, like last week, I've got the uh, slides and the, uh, the summary uh, from the publisher of the key points of, of the statistics part of Chapter 2 if this is more familiar to you and you want to, uh, to skip ahead or use those to uh, just quickly, quickly review it. So uh, let's get started then. With statistics, there's terminology that's used, and so we'll review that and talk about how that applies to the common types of, of statistical work we'll do. So let's start with the, f the first three terms. Uh, when we're talking about statistics, it means we're taking a, uh, a sample of something, a, a sample of the, uh, the home prices that have sold in a neighborhood. And so variate is the name for an individual item, so an individual uh, home sale price, an individual home size. Population is all of the, the variates in the group that, that, you, uh, that you're sampling. And then aggregate is the sum or, or the total of all those uh, variates, of all those numbers you gathered for the uh, population that you're trying to, to measure and describe. And, and we'll see that uh, used in an example here as we, uh, as we proceed on through. Um, so random sampling is a key point here because with statistics we want to provide an objective approach. So we'll measure a sample of the entire population and we want to make sure that we're not measuring only a, a portion of the population, not just all the, the older houses or not just all the newer houses, that we, that we get a, a sampling so that we represent the entire population with our sample. And, and so an important factor is that it's, it's random. Another important factor is that we get a sufficiently large sample size to have some confidence in what we're measuring. In other words, if we've got a, a neighborhood and maybe we only get two or three sales, well, we don't know. Are those, you know, unusually big houses because that's what it's popular right now or or newer houses uh, because they sell better so we want we want to make sure that you know we get a large enough sample that we uh, we represent well the the uh, the population uh, that, that we're trying to measure and talk about and that that it's random that it's not uh, biased uh, one way or the other either because uh, we knew it and we we conscientiously made that selection or that, that we didn't get a, a large enough sample size and so we accidentally didn't get a very random sample. Now w once you've got the data, uh, a parameter is a, a number that, uh, that describes the data you've got. It provides a, a summary and so an example, and, and we'll see what these uh, mean, is the mean and the median and then there's the the mode as well and so so we'll talk about those parameters that we will use to describe the data and then here at the bottom of the page is that link to the uh, the Khan Academy lecture and a, as I mentioned when I reviewed it uh, at the end he actually throws in a, a real estate example which was a which was a nice coincidence for us so once we've got the, the data and uh, we're confident that we've got a sufficient sample size and that it was randomly sampled, uh, then we can organize it and uh, describe it. And so there's two uh, major categories of descriptive uh, statistics. The, the 
first one is the measures of central tendency, which means how well is the data representative of the um, of the average or or you know in an ideal world say that that all those numbers would be the same uh, and, and so there would be no variation they'd all be right right at the the actual number we're mer we're measuring uh, but in the real world there'll be some dispersion so for, for whatever reasons uh, a number may be above or below whatever that true value is we're measuring or, and so how well those uh, congregate around that uh, that central tendency is, is what's measured by the parameters we talk about here. The mean is the average. It's the the sum of all those variates of all the individual measurements you made divided by the, the number of variates and, and we've got an example down there and then uh, the second term I want to describe that, that's uh, fairly easy to pick out is is the mode which means the most frequently occurring variate and as you can imagine depending on your sample you could have uh, multiple modes so there, there could be multiple uh, results that, that appear the same number of times. So I, I give a simple example there at the bottom, say that we've got this uh, sample, $10, $10, $20, $30, $40, and $50. You can see that's fairly dispersed, so it, it's not well congregated around the center, but we can still make some measurements about it. Uh, you know, you'd start with with the the sum or the aggregate that's adding up each of those uh, numbers individually and that's a hundred and sixty and then you could calculate the mean by taking uh, hundred and sixty divided by uh, the number of samples at six and, and so the mean is twenty six point seven it's actually twenty six point six 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 and we we round it there to to one uh, decimal point so the the mean is twenty six point seven uh, which you can see fits pretty well in, in the, the middle of those numbers. Now the mode uh, is 10. Uh, in this sample, the, the mode may not tell you much, and in real estate I would say mode is not very frequently used. Certainly mean and then median, the next term we'll get to, are, are, are frequently used. Mode, I, I mean an example I could think of is if you had a, a new development of townhomes and all were essentially identical same view same location same size and and a number of sales uh, well you might say really if they're brand new and they're they're furnished the same and they have the same view and amenities that, that they really should sell for the same price and so maybe you've got uh, 10 sales that were at one price uh, one that was quite a bit above and and you know two or three that were, were below you know the reality of what is the the reasonable estimate of the price of those new townhomes would probably be the mode. The one that was higher might have been a, a buyer that was uh, was very motivated and, and overpaid, and and the ones that uh, were low could have been you, you know at the end of the the development the developer just wanted to get them off the books, and, and you know there may have been some uh, some unusual motivation. He may have sold them lower, uh, but but the the measurement that would best represent what the the most likely price is would be the mode in that case. Now the, the mean and, and the median are probably going to be pretty close as well but again this is a an example of making sure you understand what you're measuring and that, that you pick the uh, the best tool to statistically represent that. So we've covered mean and mode for this sample that you can see at the bottom of the page and then median is the third key term that measures this central tendency. And so on the next slide you can see the definition. Median, or think of it as, as middle, is, is found by dividing the number of variates into two equal groups. And so you can do this with a calculator or with your computer, but if you're doing it on paper the best way to do it is to uh, to order the data. So you, you rank it from, from lowest to highest uh, as you can see we did there and, and then uh, you can determine you know where the middle is a and so in practice if the the number of variates or measurements is odd then the median is just that that single number that's in the middle uh, if it's even like our our sample below then the median is the the average or the mean of the two 
that are right in the middle there. So in our sample, uh, 20 and 30 are in the middle. Uh, there's two lower and two higher. And so the average of 20 and 30 is 25. So, so for this sample, you can say that the median is 25. And then you recall from the previous slide that the mean or the average is 26.7. And the mode is 10. And so what you could say is if the media in the middle is 25, but the, the mean is a bit above that, then the, the sample may be uh, weighted towards, uh, towards the larger uh, number, toward, towards the, the higher value uh, sales there. So again, you have to, to be careful that you understand what the, uh, what the statistics tell you and and how you interpret them. So those are the key, those three, mean, median, and mode are the key measures of central tendency. And then the next category of statistics is the what they call the measures of dispersion. And, and so I say this is how tight is the data. I talked earlier about how well they're they're clustered around the, the central number or, or the average number. And so there are statistics you can use to describe that, how dispersed is the data. And so you see those here, the, the range is the, the measure of the difference. So what's, what's the, the difference between the lowest number and the highest number for this population that you've measured? So that's, that's range. In other words, the highest minus the lowest would give you the range. So in our example, that would have been 60 minus 10, or 50, for the range of that data. Uh, deviation is a measure of, of how widely those individual measurements are vary. It's vary from that, from that midpoint. And there's uh, two uh, types of deviation, standard deviation, which you may have heard of is, is the more common one. Uh, but there's the average or, or mean deviation. And that's just a measure of, of the average of how far each of, of those individual variates or numbers is from, from the mean, from the, the middle of the, uh, the, po uh, the average of the population. So the difference there is pretty subtle and not something we're going to need to get into in this course. Um, the average deviation can work better if you've got a non-normal distribution. We'll, we'll see what that means in a minute, where standard deviation uh, works best if it's a, a typical uh, normal distribution. Uh, but leave that aside and, and, and just understand that there's uh, at least two ways to, to talk about the, uh, the deviation of, of all the, the samples from, from the mean of the population. And then standard deviation uh, takes a calculation based on uh, those individual variations in the entire population. Now, now standard deviation has a formula, and you can see it on page uh, 56 and 57 of the textbook. But uh, again, as I mentioned earlier, typically you can do this with a calculator or spreadsheet. And for the, the depth that we're covering statistics here, which is uh, essentially just a, a one-week uh, lecture in our in our 16 week course uh, I, I don't think it's reasonable to, to say if, if you haven't seen this before that you need to to memorize the formula and be able to to calculate standard deviation you, you can look at it at the book in the book and, and see how it's it's used there uh, and the uh, the average and the standard deviation uh, calculated for for an example in the book but I, I'm not going to require you to have the uh, have the formula memorized um, I will tell you when I took the uh, the, the real estate appraiser licensing test the uh, the general uh, certified general license there there was a, a question where you had to, to recognize that the formula the was shown was the one for standard deviation. So, so uh, I think being familiar with it at, at that level is is uh, sufficient. So, so here's a picture of a normal distribution and a bell curve. Now, when when you're measuring data and you get 
to these descriptions of, of uh, dispersion, uh, they, they talk about a, stand, uh, a, a normal curve, excuse me, a normal curve, and you can see a picture of it there. So uh, you, you find a, a normal distribution, this, this bell curve, uh, in a lot of examples in nature, this example I pulled up happens to be uh, IQ, but you know you could find that with height, weight, uh, a, a lot of different things that you can measure. Now, a, as we'll see, that's not always the case that you'll have this normal distribution, but when you do, then you can say some things about it that, uh, you know, if 100, as you can see on this example, is your... Uh, mean and median and mode, uh, you, you see 68% on the top there and 34% on each side. That, that measure standard deviation uh, would say that 68% uh, of, of the population and, uh, would, would fall uh, within one standard deviation, within plus or minus one standard deviation of, of the mean. 34% uh, on each side, and then below that, 95% would would fall within two standard deviations. So when you make some measurements and you say, okay, the the predicted price for this neighborhood is a hundred thousand dollars, and the standard deviation is is five thousand dollars, then you can say, okay, 68% uh, of those homes should sell within uh, the range of ninety-five to $105,000. And 34% uh, on each side, or 68% and 95% are approximation. There's a fraction there, and again, uh, when you go in-depth studying statistics, they'll, uh, you, you can see you know, how those are calculated and, um, and the more precise numbers. And you can see it steps on out, so then uh, 99% within three standard deviations and, and then, then on out from there. So uh, this is an example of, of a normal distribution and the, the bell-shaped curve. Uh, I would say that in real estate and in, in a number of other things, you won't have a perfectly bell-shaped curve. Uh, you know, within a neighborhood, no home will sell for less than zero dollars, but certainly a, a home could sell for you know, 10 million. So you, you, you could have uh, one that's, uh, or a few that are, are outliers that are way out to the right, but uh, to the left, the, the minimum is obviously bounded. Uh, so it, it, you won't find a, a perfect uh, standard normal distribution, but, but you may find, uh, find close to that. So now once you've, you've measured the data, we, we saw the, the bell-shaped curve there, but uh, th there's different ways to present it and, and different ways used in, in, uh, in real estate reports. Uh, a line graph is, is what we saw on the previous page where it's a smooth, uh, continuous line. The next two, bar chart and histogram, are, are related. A bar chart is typically used for for individual items, the number of, of two-bedroom homes, the number of, of three-bedroom homes, the number of four-bedroom homes, where each is, is a distinct category. Uh, a histogram is what you see at the bottom of this slide, uh, and t typically those uh, bars, if you will, will be touching each other, and that, that's typically used where you're measuring a, a population, so you're measuring the same thing. You're not differentiating two bedroom from three bedroom you're just you're measuring the price and showing here uh, graphically how many sold at each price now a, another term they throw in that contrasts with the uh, the normal distribution is a, a skewed distribution or skewness and and the definition there is the measure of, of how symmetrical it is. So as I said the the chart at the bottom of this slide is a, a histogram and it is skewed to the right. And again, that was kind of the example I was talking about before, where you probably have a few homes that uh, may sell for a lot more uh, than the majority of the, the homes in the neighborhood. And so you can see an example of that. Uh, and in the book, it, it shows some more uh, on pages 58 and 59 in terms of uh, these types of, of presentations and, and what they look like. and. Uh, uh, an example as well of that uh, that normal distribution that, that we looked at before. 
so now once you've got the the statistics uh, you can use it uh, to make the prediction so what you're looking for is uh, predicting the the price say and so uh, there, there's a, a tool called regression where you look at the data uh, as you can see presented in the graph there and try to, to figure out the the best fit uh, the best prediction uh, that, that the data will give you about what you're looking for the price and and so uh, simple linear regression means that you take one variable like uh, in this case on the, the bottom the, the X variable might be the the size of the home in square feet and then you use that to predict the other variable you're looking at the the Y axis on the left could be the the price of the property and so that blue line you would say that is that's your model that's your best fit line and so you could use that uh, and, and look along the bottom and say okay for a house of this size uh, I'll go up and see where the the blue line is at and and read across to the the left to the the y-axis to to look at the the value that's predicted the other key piece here is that word linear linear regression meaning it's a, a straight line so what you're looking for really does follow a straight line you would assume that uh, with price and size of the home in square feet that that it should uh, the more square feet the the higher the price and, and that's what you see here but there's other variables date of sale probably being the most common one where it's not linear now for a, a short time period you might say that it's approximately linear so uh, if you've got homes from uh, that sold three months ago and you're looking at a home today and you'd say the market has uh, been fairly steadily increasing over the last three months then you can approximate that you can say it looks like prices are going up a, a half a percent per month in the market overall and and use that but if you're in the middle of a uh, a point where the market has turned down over the period you're measuring then then you you can't you you can't say well okay it was going up and, and so I'll, I'll estimate it going up or going down that you will estimate going down because you had some inflection point or or a change in the market so in that case it would not be appropriate to try to to use the the linear regression model to uh, to measure and predict what the the price would be today based on uh, based on a trend over time so again you have to be uh, aware of what you're measuring or what you're trying to model and make sure that the tools you're using uh, actually fit that so the the simple linear regression uh, you can do with a chart here that there, there's simple formulas if you will uh, the next category is what's called multiple linear regression and that says uh, we want to predict the price for example but we're not just going to look at the size of the home we'll look at the number of bedrooms the number of bathrooms maybe some measurement for the the view and for the age all of those factors that in the real world do go into a, a, a buyer's uh, decision-making process and so it says in the definition here allows you to make subtle predictions about the market and, and using the appropriate software Excel will do that there there's dedicated software uh, I posted a, an example on our uh, web page in this week's folder of of a tool that's called the CVR collateral valuation report that that I use that that makes use of this uh, multiple linear regression tool and uh, again I've got a couple of, of links here that go into some more detail and and uh, again summarized down there at the bottom that you'd still have this model where Y typically is the uh, the predicted uh, price and that's what you're looking for but that there'll be multiple X values and that each of those would be weighted differently based on what the uh, what the model shows you uh, now again what you have to be careful of is understanding uh, what the model is doing and and I'll talk in a little more detail about an example of that uh, 
next, but uh, sometimes these factors overlap, as you can imagine. The, uh, the number of bedrooms is probably going to, to correlate with the total size of the home, and so you might have value based on the number of bedrooms, but that also takes into account the, the size of the home, and, and, and so the model isn't necessarily perfect and may not necessarily reflect what an actual actual buyer is thinking but based on the data you've got it's saying this is the the way to to make the best fit line to make the best prediction based on the on the data you have so now i want to uh, conclude with just a little bit of discussion about the the risks that i had alluded to uh, when using statistics and again this is risks uh, f that you could inadvertently fall into or risks that you have to be aware of to make sure uh, if you're looking at a statistical analysis that it's uh, that it, it really is uh, portraying what it, it claims to portray in, in an accurate manner. Uh, so, so the first risk I talk about there is, is small sample size, and I alluded to this earlier. Normally you want uh, 30 or more variates uh, to, to get a, a good sized sample and to say that you've you've measured the population well and that if there's one or two that are are unusual or not particularly representative that those don't have undue weight on the results you've got and that hopefully if uh, those one or two are unusual that they may in fact balance each other out one being particularly good one being particularly bad or or, or things like that uh, and then uh, we talked about standard deviation and how well that can predict a, you know, on the normal curve, uh, you know, of the measurements you make, how many will fall within that uh, within that range, that 68 percent. And so you you have to be careful. I, I use the term signal noise ratio here. So how much is the signal, the actual value you're getting, and how much is noise, just kind of the static. Uh, that's going on, and, and I, I say here, especially with many unmeasured or unmeasurable variables, uh, with homes, you, you, you've heard the phrase in real estate, it's location, location, location. Uh, no home is going to have an identical location, uh, you know, within a even a new development of, of townhomes or condos. There'll be some that have a better view than the others, some that are closer to the street or noise than the others. And so you may or may not be able to recognize and measure those, and so you may have some of those factors uh, playing in to the results you've got. Certainly as well, and we'll talk about this some more in later chapters, each individual sale is the result of one buyer and one seller's negotiations and you can get a a buyer that's so enthusiastic that they that they overpay by quite a bit or a seller that's so desperate to unload that they they take an offer that may be below what is more likely the market price and so each individual sales transaction will have some noise in there some things that may not be measurable even if you were able to uh, to interview or talk to the buyer or the seller uh, they may not uh, be willing or, or recognize their particular biases and, and so again you'll have some level of noise each each sale won't be perfectly describable because there's a lot of variables involved in each one and and so you have to be careful and and aware of how precise or imprecise the the numbers that you get from these statistical analyses are and uh, as i said we talked about the the standard deviation being a a good indicator of, of how how much signal is in there, how, how reliable is the data. The next point, uh, mistaking correlation for causation, this, uh, especially with the multiple regression analysis, is something you have to be uh, aware of. There, there's a number of factors that may be 
correlated, meaning they move together, but uh, you've got to be careful not to assume that one causes the other. And, and I say here, especially from back testing, meaning you start today and you look at some historical results. Uh, the example I'd heard of was ice cream vendors don't cause the temperature to go up. If you were setting, you know, in a park and measuring the number of ice cream vendors that appeared each day, you'd see very few in the winter and a lot in the summer. But, you know, this is a silly example, but you wouldn't say those ice cream vendors coming in cause the temperature to go up. It might be the other way around, but in some other cases it's more subtle and you see this especially as well in, in stock prices where the back testing, looking backwards, you may say you know something uh, is correlated and you assume it, that, that there's a, a cause as well. And, and in real estate uh, too you have to be careful of this that if you have a, a new theory about uh, about a factor that may be causing the the value change that that you test it that that after you've analyzed the data from from the past the back testing that that you look at it for a few examples after that to see if it really works. The second example, fireplaces may not be worth $35,000. This was another uh, real world example I heard about in a in a Denver neighborhood where there was this multiple regression analysis and you know the computer looks at each of the factors and said well a, a fireplace is worth $35,000. Now what it was really measuring was that within this neighborhood there was a, a fairly uh, distinct uh, difference between some older larger higher quality homes that had fireplaces and some newer ones that didn't and so it wasn't just the fireplace that was uh, uh, causing the value to be $35,000 higher there were some other things like quality of construction and, and more desirable location. So if you didn't know that, if you weren't familiar with the neighborhood, you could get lured into saying, okay, well, here it is and I'll just blindly follow it. Uh, same kind of thing I, as I talked about on the, the previous slide with uh, with bed, number of bedrooms being related to the uh, the total size of, of the home. And again, with the, the software tools, especially in this multiple regression analysis, it doesn't have that kind of, uh, you know, knowledge of, of what makes sense and what doesn't. It just has the numbers that are fed into it. And the example I posted on the, the web of this uh, CVR collateral valuation report format, uh, you'll see in there that uh, it will spell out each of the variables and that as an appraiser I can go in and say well this one's uh, not really working right or it you know it doesn't make sense and, and exclude it so that the the calculation doesn't use that but uses the other factors so maybe it throws out fireplaces but uses uh, some rating for the the neighborhood quality and the last point I make here is selective sampling and, and ignoring data you don't like. Th this you have to be careful of. You, If you go in with an idea that you're looking for a particular number it, it can cause you a bias and say well I'm going to exclude uh, you know these sales and, and you've got to be careful with that. I mean you can explain but not exclude I think would be the way I'd phrase it that if there really was something unusual in a in a sale that makes it not a, a, a representative sample you can report it and say it was excluded because it was uh, condemned or red tagged and, and that wasn't uh, that wasn't uh, apparent uh, when I initially sampled it. So, so that also gives your reader or the user more confidence that hey the data is out there if they look at it but that the knowledge you've got you were able to say this really isn't a uh, isn't a representative sample and so because of that we'll we'll leave that out of the, the analysis that you perform. Um, so with that we conclude uh, week three's lecture and I'll look forward to uh, to seeing your posts on the discussion forum online where we talk about conceiving of a neighborhood where the statistical data or the typical kind of statistical measurements may not paint the whole picture and, and so with with your uh, knowledge now of the, the statistics that we've covered hopefully you'll be able to uh, to see uh, and come up with an example uh, where that might be the case thanks